So you got up this morning and you started it like any other day. Got ready for work, ate your breakfast, you're dressed, go to hit the auto start or run out to start your car and won't start. Batteries are dead. What are you going to do? Wake up the neighbor to get a jump start or try to start another one of your own vehicles if you got two to jump start it? And then uh, you find that your battery froze overnight because it was weak or lacked charge. Uh, if they don't charge up, they'll they'll freeze. So now your battery's shot, and now you got to replace it. Well, that's expensive. So we're going to try to combat that problem today uh, by adding a trickle charger to our vehicle. Actually, be on board on the vehicle. Uh, three of these are, I have three of these, these are probably, two of them are my f probably favorite. Uh, the one in the middle here is a Napa charger, and I was excited about it because it was a true under the hood charger. Uh, it's a sealed unit, the whole thing's sealed. Then I opened up the box, and it's got about a 14 inch cord on it, and about another 14 inch of leads. I just can't find a place to mount it where I can get the cord to even pop out under the hood. And the whole point of it being in a sealed unit is so that there isn't anything that can make a spark like where a plug-in is. So when you're charging a battery, a battery can give out hydrogen gas. Uh, these trickle chargers, not so much. Uh, maybe this one might be able to charge it. It does take a little charge to get it. A lot of the time it's... Uh, you know, to get a battery explosion, you're overcharging the battery. It's in a closed space. So we're, uh, we're going to deal with this by mounting this charger here on a 2012 Dodge, but we're going to mount it behind the grill. There's lots of spaces where you can find to mount these chargers. This is a pretty small charger. It's a battery maintainer. So once it's, once it's got it all charged up, it just goes right into fully automatic uh, battery maintainer. That's that's all it does. Uh, so it won't overcharge your battery, it won't cook it. Uh, so anyway, we're gonna mount this one behind the grill in this Dodge pickup. Like I said, you can mount them under the bumpers. You can mount them anywhere as, you know, as long as they ain't under the hood or next to the battery so that uh, if there ever was a discharge of hydrogen gas that it would uh, possibly actually start a fire or it wouldn't really start a fire but it just explodes your battery explodes and it's just a mess to clean up uh, i've seen it happen and yeah battery explosion is a thing uh some people may not know that but it it does happen uh mostly due to overcharging uh and then we're gonna hook show you so we're gonna show you how to do that and then we're gonna just show you how to uh you know other ways of charging your battery so that your batteries don't fail this winter. So like I said, it's an expensive fail to have to replace your batteries uh, due to letting them freeze. So this this will fix that problem. I'll show you just how we mounted it up on this Dodge, and then uh, just to give you an idea how where you can go with them. So here we are. We're on the front of a uh, 2012 Dodge, right on the passenger side. Uh, the grill is off. Uh, there's four bolts on the top and then just two little clips. This is where one of those clips go. Uh, this does have an aftermarket bumper and grill, but the aftermarket grill is the exact same that I have for it. It's the exact same as the stock grill. So if it fits behind my grill, it'll fit behind a stock grill. So this is that Schumacher Speed Charge Battery Maintainer. What we did is we just wire tied it there. Uh, I have white wire ties. I would suggest using black. Uh, just won't show behind the grill as much if you use black wire ties. Uh, anyway, there's a little Velcro. You probably won't be able to see it back there. But uh, I got a little Velcro strip back there. I do that when I do uh, wire ties because then it just can't slide. This here is tight. I mean, I, I won't have any problems losing that. And then I got the wire loom here. And that just runs up. 
We got her tied off there. Got another aftermarket air cleaner here. Goes through a hole. And then we got her hooked up to the battery cables. Now, here's the... I always put the ground on first. I just tied it in right here. That's the lead right there, the lead wire. There's the other lead wire. Put the positive on positive. So negative on negative, positive on positive. You're good to go. Now, down under the bumper, we have where the cords are. I have both my cords underneath the bumper. There they are. This is my block heater cord. That is for the, and I'm going to tie them together. Then all you need is one of these. Triple plug-in cord. Or a double. And then you're good to go. All tied in. Your battery's charging. You got a block heater. This truck's going to start up. And I, I have it done to a Ford. And I have it done to a Chevy. These trucks start up. It was 30 below with a with a another 15 below or 15 degrees added on below wind chill here two weeks ago. Never had a problem with the Ford starting up, and now this one won't have this have the problem either. Batteries will be charged up. You'll have block heater. Be good to go. I'll show you a couple other ways here to hook this up. Now we got our die hard charger hooked up. Uh, it's got a little hook on it. Hang it from your, if you can leave it in your garage, I guess. If you got a little garage and you can leave the hood open, uh, then you could probably use this die hard one. It's a little bigger. It's got the clamps. But it also has that little disconnect right here. So if you didn't want to use the clamps and you wanted to wire it in like we did on the other one, it's got the same thing. It's got the little little lead, little leads right there. You just connect those in. It's a fusible link. Then you can just leave that under your hood. It's got that little cover so you ain't don't ground off to anything. Just leave that up under under your hood. And then when you want to connect up to it, you just connect up to it. And then uh pull it off. The Schumacher has the same thing. If you really don't want to mount it behind the grill, you can hook the leads up, unplug it right right here, and then put that cover on, on those leads, and then you can just leave it. And then when you need to do it on a cold day, you can do it, but me, I just, I would like to mount it, forget about it. Uh, the reason I like to mount it is then nobody steals it. It's behind the grill, Ain't nobody going to take the grill out to get to it. Plus, they're not even going to know it's there to get to. You know, so that's that's why it stays behind my grill. But that's that's a couple of different ways you can do it. This one is, uh, I like the Die Hard one. Because I it actually has like a 6 amp charge. It also has where you can charge lithium. And it has that readout so you can tell what your voltage is actually at or how the percentage your battery is charged up then it'll switch to a maintain too so there's a couple of different chargers for you the die hard one and then our Schumacher one uh, well, I guess it's your choice if you want to mount them or not but they both are really good maintainer charger and uh, that Napa one it isn't that it's a bad charger it's just your back plugging things in underneath the hood, and I'm not looking to keep my hood popped. I'm not looking to keep it. It just me. I'd rather have something that's mounted, and uh, I don't want anything plugged in under the hood next to a battery that's charging. So, uh, if you like it, click the like button. Uh, please subscribe, and uh, we'll keep on giving you videos. We're trying to shoot them out about once a month. Uh, thanks.